Let's talk about the stereochemical descriptors D and L, which are used in a biochemical context to refer to enantiomeric sets of molecules, in this context, monosaccharides. And the entire system of D and L is based on glyceraldehyde, the simplest carbohydrate. Glyceraldehyde is a triose with three carbons, and by convention, D-glyceraldehyde has the R configuration at carbon 2, at its only stereocenter. In the enantiomeric L-glyceraldehyde, the corresponding stereocenter has the opposite configuration, S rather than R. We'll talk about Fischer projections in more detail in a later video, but the way I always remember this is to draw the Fischer projections of D and L glyceraldehyde and look at the direction in which the hydroxyl group connected to carbon 2 is pointing. In L glyceraldehyde, this central hydroxyl group points to the left in the Fischer projection, L for left, and in D glyceraldehyde, this hydroxyl group points to the right in the Fischer projection. If you've never seen Fischer projections before, don't worry too much about this, as we'll talk in more detail about them in a later video. As we move to the longer sugars, we think about the longer sugars being built through addition reactions onto glyceraldehyde. So for example, we can highlight the carbon backbone of D-glyceraldehyde right here, and notice that in the tetroses, the D-tetroses, we have those carbons of glyceraldehyde kind of built in. In all of the D sugars, that stereocenter that corresponds to carbon 2 of glyceraldehyde, the one that's closest to the CH2OH group, has the R configuration. This is the hallmark of D sugars. On the other hand, if we look at L glyceraldehyde, we can see again that the three carbons of glyceraldehyde are built into these tetrose sugars. And in the L series, the configuration of that stereocenter that's closest to the CH2OH group is S. And the key point in general is that it's the stereocenter that's closest to the CH2OH group, or at the bottom of the Fischer projection, that is the determining factor for D or L. And D and L sugars are enantiomeric. Notice that erythrose really means a trans or anti-relationship between the hydroxyls when the backbone is drawn this way. D and L erythros are enantiomers. They differ in configuration not only at this stereocenter, but at their other stereocenter also. As we move to larger sugars, this trend continues. We can still find the carbons of D-glyceraldehyde on the end of, say, the pentoses, right here. And it's this carbon, carbon 2 in the original glyceraldehyde, that defines D and L. With the R configuration, this is D ribose, and with the S configuration at that stereocenter, this is L ribose. We'll revisit D and L when we look at Fischer projections here in a second.